The birth of quintuplets is a rare and miraculous event. Every now and then I have to sit back and I have to look at them all and go, all of these babies came from me. But these babies were born nearly four months ahead of schedule, and their lives were at immediate risk. If I could only carry them longer, if I could do something for them to stop their pain. As the first year of their life unfolds, we will follow the Dirks quintuplets on a perilous and unforgettable journey. The issue is, can we keep them alive? And even more difficult is, should we keep them alive? I'm not praying for a miracle, I'm praying for five. And what are my odds of five miracles occurring? Today is August 1st, the first time the Dirks quintuplets have been brought together as a family. You had a couple awake over there, huh? The quintuplets are nearly three months old. Their six-year-old sister, Samantha, is still getting acquainted with her two brothers and three sisters. Oh, no, which one is that one? <laughs> That's Brooklyn, honey. <laughs> to love five babies at a time, is, it's, it's huge. It's hard to put into words, you know. It's, it's overwhelming because it's like, do I have enough? Do I have enough love to go around, you know? But yet, you know, what a silly question, you know. Of course, I've got enough love to love all of my children, you know, all six of my children. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Every now and then, I have to sit back and I have to look at them all and go, all of these babies came from me, all at the same time. <laughs> Not just one at a time, all at the same time. And that's, it's a very hard concept for me to grasp. Which one's Brunton? Also hard to grasp is how to schedule time to nurse ultimately all five quintuplets. With four nursing and, you know, being able to nurse several times a day, I'm going, okay, I'm not gonna get any sleep. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a very, it, just thinking about it, is just a very daunting idea, you know. What do you think? What do you think? But far more daunting is the fact that these babies were born nearly four yeah. months early. They have been struggling for their survival outside the womb ever since. As their parents, Brenda and Jim have been confronted with many life or death decisions regarding their infants. I found it. Yay. They've been through more in their life than most of us will in our entire lives. And in a very short period of time, they had multiple situations that were exceedingly stressful beyond anything any, any individual can comprehend. And they dealt with it amazingly well. Early on, Three of the quintuplets underwent surgeries to close a blood vessel near their hearts. And that was just the beginning of a series of medical hurdles. From the start, it was clear that a long hospitalization would be necessary. Here at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, a premature infant born as early as 23 or 24 weeks is given a second chance at life. This situation is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you really feel that 23 or 24 weeks is too young, uh, then it will be too young. Uh, if you feel that 23 and 24 weeks has potential to go on and do well, live a normal life, uh, there is that potential and uh, it's reflected in the outcomes. Any more duckies today? The Dirks quintuplets were born at 24 weeks, three days. These pictures were taken over the first weeks of their lives. A singleton born this prematurely faces an 80% chance of survival. What do you think, kiddo? Uh huh? You are so busy today. The quintuplets, however, faced much worse odds. 
The first thing that goes through my head is how are they doing, what's the likelihood that these parents are going to take five children home? And statistically, we know with, with individual 24-week babies what we would expect, but when you put multiples in one uterus, the statistics go down, and I would hope that they would be able to take three home. These odds terrified Jim and Brenda. I'm not praying for a miracle, I'm praying for five. And what are my odds of five miracles occurring? Brenda and Jim have barely had a moment to prepare for this momentous birth. You better get a very, very high paying job. At 22 and 23 years old, they were preoccupied with their already hectic lives. Jim had just been hired as a systems engineer at Lockheed Martin. It probably wasn't the most ideal time. You know, it was just got out of college, just changing jobs, you know, um, just moving into a new house. Um, it's been a busy year. You ready? Here we go. Brenda and Jim began to think about having a second child when their daughter Samantha reached the age of five. Having trouble conceiving, Brenda's doctor gave her a low dose of Clomid, a fertility drug that helped to regulate her cycle. She faced an 8% increased chance of having twins and at least a one in 1,000th chance of having quintuplets. We found out we were having four babies on Valentine's Day. Um, in March, a month later, I found out there were five, and then they said, you're staying in the hospital. So I got the phone call at work, you know, that, oh, by the way, there's five and I can't come home anymore. So, you know, here we go with this house that we've, you know, been in for all of five days and you know, all of a sudden everything gets turned upside down again. So at that point, I, I wasn't sure what to expect. I was nervous every time they went near an ultrasound because, you know, I was afraid they were going to start multiplying again on me, so. I wish you weren't in this thingy. Yeah, it wouldn't be so difficult. On May 5th, the Dirks world expanded from a family of three to a family of eight in just six minutes. The first quintuplet to arrive was a girl, Katina Marie. She was one of the smallest, weighing just one pound, three ounces. Then Darren John, the heaviest of the five, followed at one pound, eight ounces. Next came Brooklyn Renee, captured on her parents' camera. Then Stephanie Michelle. And lastly, Sean Michael. Together, the quintuplets weighed six pounds, six and a half ounces, the size of a full-term infant. Born so prematurely, each baby underwent life-saving measures to help them breathe and stabilize their vital signs. A team of 25 doctors and nurses were present to ease their entry into a world that was thrust upon them all too soon. This is an intensive care unit. It is a critical situation. Any preterm, pre, preemie baby born at 24 weeks needs assistance. But if you times that by five infants born at the same time needing help at this week's gestation, it is a very emergent situation. The Dirks quintuplets were kept alive with the help of ventilators like this one, which is helping this critically ill newborn to breathe. In the last two decades, the field of neonatology has been transformed by advances in these machines, as well as the development of surfactant, a wonder drug that helps the extremely immature lungs of these infants to mature more rapidly. Tethered to a web of IVs and monitors, the Dirks quintuplets clung to life. Hey, kiddo. But just 48 hours after the birth, Sean, the last quintuplet to arrive, began to have trouble breathing. We did x-rays of his lungs. Uh, we did an ultrasound of his heart, looking to see if a blood vessel near the heart was open and could contribute to the difficulty that he had breathing. And had that blood vessel been open, and I thought it probably was, we were prepared to send him to the operating room at, at 2 o'clock in the morning uh, on an emergency situation and close that blood vessel surgically. That's a pretty big ordeal in a baby that's born 16 weeks premature and weighs slightly more than a pound. Fearing the worst, Dr. Ferreira ordered ultrasound scans of Sean's brain. He discovered some bleeding in his ventricles, 
a condition that could lead to significant brain damage. This is the front of the brain. This is the back of the brain. And you can see that there's an, a blood clot that fills the entire ventricular system here. This white area is a thick blood clot. Just based on, on this study and, and this study alone, I would expect that the baby would have at least a 50-50 chance of having neurological problems later on in life, that this could get worse, uh, that, that considering what we see, that, that the best course of therapy is unclear. Just two days old, Sean's survival was at stake. For a, a strange doctor to sit down with them at 1 o'clock in the morning and tell them, A, that their son might die, B, that we might need to send them to surgery, and C, that maybe they should consider stopping the therapy that is being administered, and for them to calmly process all of the information we gave them and make a, a coherent decision, in my opinion, was amazing because in the background of all of it, they had four other small, vulnerable, preterm infants that were critically ill. Oh, I know, I know. Dr. Ferreira decided to delay the vascular surgery, and in that time, the bleeding in Sean's brain stopped. His condition improved, but his long-term prognosis remains uncertain. The brain tissue looks normal. Uh, the, the size of the ventricle looks normal. But now there are other pieces of the puzzle that we also have to factor in. And yes, he could be, he could be very, very impaired later on in his life, but this is not a commitment to impairment. Uh, they, they, there's reason to be optimistic. Ultimately, it will be time that will, will determine Sean's outcome, not myself, not any scan that anyone can do. Sean got off to a rough start but his siblings have also faced difficult battles. All five continue to have respiratory problems after their birth. Good morning, kiddo. Say hi to mommy. Katina suffered a severe case. Even in the second month, the, the month of June, it was still, we had a lot of problems with Katina and her lungs, and we were very worried that we might have to remove part of Katina's lung. And the real turning point is when they came here. Here is special care, where the quintuplets need less intense medical attention. Get that air out of your tummy, kiddo. They are now two and a half months old. In the children's first months, peaceful, uneventful stretches of time are welcomed by Brenda and Jim but they have endured enough medical emergencies to know how quickly this can change. Just nine days after having all five babies moved to special care, Stephanie turns pale and lethargic and is ordered back to the NICU because of a mysterious infection. Here at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, the Dirks quintuplets have been battling one medical emergency after another. Born nearly four months early, their health is precarious. Stephanie has been ordered back to the neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU, where she is fighting a mysterious infection. When a premature baby gets sick, or any baby, newborn baby gets sick, they just quit. They quit eating, they quit breathing, everything. So we need to be ready to assist them. This is Stephanie's fourth infection, and she is barely three months old. Ever since her birth, she has struggled with her feedings and had trouble gaining weight. The infections have only made things worse. Stephanie is now the smallest of the five, weighing less than three pounds. I'm hoping that it's nothing more than just simply needing to grow out of this, you know, get bigger. She's so tiny. Um, she needs to just gain some weight, and, and hopefully this will resolve itself. She also needed a blood transfusion because her hematocrit was low. Uh, that's a very common thing in premature babies. They're not able to make enough red blood cells for themselves at this point. She has now started eating again, but she was not eating for a few days. After five days in the NICU, Stephanie is overcoming her infection. Returning here was not easy for Brenda. The first emotion was fear. It was just the fear of, she's so small. She's, you know, having such a hard time. 
and just remembering what it was to be here. Do you want to go see your brothers and sisters later? All five quintuplets spent nearly the first two months of their lives in this neonatal intensive care unit, a place filled with both heartache and small victories. The month of May was so hard for us. We had um, so many, you know, they always say there's so many ups and downs. Well, we had so many down days. One baby may have only had a down day once a week, but with five kids, there was always something going wrong. For these guys to have surgery already and to be stuck with so many needles and to be hooked up to so many machines, it's, it was really hard to watch my children go through that. Brenda took these photographs in the first weeks of the quintuplets' lives when their eyes were shielded from the billy lights used to treat jaundice, a common complication of preemies. Looking at the photographs from when they were first born was, was really hard for me because I came in here and I said, they don't look sick, you know, they look wonderful. And looking back at the pictures was hard. Um, they looked very sick. And I could see how hard of the time they had. <laughs> they were very, so small and um, it was hard. I, um, you know, then you ask yourself, you know, was there anything I could have done more? You know, if I could only carry them longer, you know, if I could, have, if I could do something for them to stop their pain. It was so hard. Caring for five premature infants is an uncertain business, often marked by slow progress and frightening setbacks. We made plans for last weekend to, to head out on Friday and be with our daughter and, and do this and do that. And all of a sudden, Katina needed eye surgery and Stephanie had to come back to the NI. And, you know, so you just can't do that. You know, it's, you know, they're very, um, very unpredictable yet, you know, things can change in a minute. Not only would Katina need urgent eye surgery, but her brother Darren and sister Brooklyn also would develop eye problems. If not caught early, the babies could go blind. Since the birth, Brenda has been tirelessly providing her babies with breast milk, which contains infection-fighting antibodies. She's doing a wonderful job pumping probably every three hours around the yeah. clock yeah. for 80 days now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah. yeah. She's the Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> she deserves a medal. <laughs> Back in special care, Stephanie is reunited with her siblings. Reaching this point is a milestone. I'm tired. Can you take a nap? The quintuplets are expected to go home around their original due date, which is in about 30 days. As much as Brenda welcomes this homecoming, she knows there are still many hurdles ahead. When they come home, what am I gonna do? <laughs> you know, How is it gonna work? We have a lot of people, the community that we're in, um, very supportive and wanna help. So I think we'll be okay there, but then it's developmentally, are they gonna be okay? You know, because they look great right now. So you get a false sense of, you know, they're all 100% fine. When they really can have problems with their eyes, learning disabilities. So it's just kind of a, the concern of how severe that will be, you know, if it, if it is at all. My... To keep everything straight, Brenda has already started a journal. I like to think that I know all the kids individually and very well, but it's so easy to get them all confused. <laughs> I walk around the room and I go, okay, Stephanie gets fed at 10? No. No, Brooklyn gets fed at 10, not Stephanie. She gets fed at nine, you know? So it's, it's very easy to confuse everything. A 
constant cacophony of alarms helps to monitor the baby's vital signs, including irregular breathing patterns called apnea. Sometimes he gets real shallow with his breathing. He doesn't take the nice, big, deep breath set that keeps the oxygen going through his blood and whatnot like it needs to. So when he does that, the alarm will go off to let us know that he needs to be taking a little bit bigger breaths. Sometimes they need to give him a little bit more flow through here, a little bit more of a boost. Sometimes he just needs a little rub on the back to remind him, saying, hey, you're, you're, you're slipping. Before discharging the babies, the doctors want the quintuplets to achieve three basic criteria. Probably the most important and obvious milestone is being able to get out of the isolate and maintain their temperature in room air and in their environmental surroundings. And then secondly, we'd want these babies to all be able to nipple all their feedings, whether that be bottle feeding or breastfeeding. And then the third thing that we'd like to be sure of uh, is that they don't have any of these little apneic episodes, these little spells where they forget to breathe. As the babies become more stable, the rewards of parenting begin to multiply. The kangaroo cares, just skin to skin, you know, where I undress them and and then I open up my shirt and just lay them on my, on my chest and they just lay there and cuddle. It helps them keep warm, it helps with their growth. And I, I believe, you know, some people have said, you know, it helps with, with the rest of their development as well. These particular babies, I am very optimistic about their short and long-term outcome. They've done beautifully and it's really nothing short of a miracle uh, the way that they have progressed. Uh, I think that their biggest uh, problem at home is going to be sleep deprivation, the parents. And I think that they're going to need help in the home. And uh, I think that will be the biggest challenge is just to be able to manage from a sheer time standpoint. Sort of like uh, training for a marathon, you have to work up to it. <laughs> Make sure you keep your hand there. there. Yep, gotta hold it. He's got a strong head. Yeah, he does. The greatest surprise is where we are right now, because for so long I had to talk in in a sense of if we come home with all five babies, and now it's to a point of when we come home with all five babies, you know. So that's just it's amazing. Katina will need to go home on oxygen because of the trouble she had with her left lung. Brenda's mother, Jean, offers a much needed helping hand. Overwhelming. It's just, you know, it's like these little ones are all coming home with us. <laughs> it's not somebody else's babies that you're just helping take care of. They're all coming home to our home. <laughs> or their home, whatever, but we're just glad we can help. There are reasons to be concerned about all five of them, but certainly Sean, with the hemorrhage that he had after birth, is, is the, the, uh, the one of the five that we would all have the most concern about. Right. And some babies that have problems like Sean had after birth can be perfectly normal, and other babies that don't have any problems after birth can have all kinds of impairment later on in life. After nearly four long months in the hospital, Darren and Sean have already made the journey home. Now, six days later, Brooklyn, Katina, and Stephanie are ready to join them. Tears of joy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's been nothing but fun. Thank you. Thank you for all enjoyed, that you've done. Enjoyed very much taking care of your kids. Thank you. I, they're strong. I, they would have fought on their own, but you guys did so much for them. You're very welcome. Stay in touch, Jim. You, you bet. Will. Thank you very much. You guys stay in touch. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> September 4th, all five quintuplets finally settle into their new home in River Falls, Wisconsin, about an hour away from Minneapolis. Now, the Dirks family of eight is truly on their own. He's just, he's up yet. 
if this falls over, this could break off. And then you have a nice little missile that'll shoot through the house. That's not good. Not good. There's still a lot that needs to get done. We need to get them all settled. We need to figure out who's ate what already and, and who needs to eat yet again because, you know, just coming home from the hospital with them all, you know, trying to mesh what they did and with what we need to do now and, um, you know, make sure, you know, everybody gets fed. You know, it's, it's going to be a long night. Here in River Falls, Wisconsin, the Dirks quintuplets rest somewhat peacefully with their big sister, Samantha. Brooklyn, Sean, Stephanie, Darren, and Katina. Recently home from the hospital, they are just over four months old. But because they were born nearly four months early, they are still extremely vulnerable to any illness. Okay, got your legs. Okay. I'm working on it. I've never done this before. Fold it in half one more time. No, the other way. There you go. He needs iron. Iron? Yep. Oh, I know, sweetie. There you go. Yeah, I haven't lived Look at the labels long. on the drawers, honey. Oh, hey, look at that. Dish rack. Hey, look at that. Somebody was thinking. That was your most intelligent wife. Caring for five fragile infants and a six-year-old is an overwhelming task. But Brenda and Jim Dirks are not ones to shy away from responsibility. Brenda attributes much of her strength to her parents. It started young with me. I grew up on a farm. And I had a lot of responsibility placed on me. And I hated it at the time. I just wanted to be a kid, you know? <laughs> but I, you know, I can't thank them enough for the responsibility that they placed on me when I was growing up because it gave me the strength to get through what we have been through. Otherwise, I, I think I would be a complete wreck. But Brenda and Jim are fortunate to live in the small town of River Falls, Wisconsin. where neighbors are used to helping neighbors. As newcomers, Brenda and Jim decided to join St. Bridget's Church, a parish of 1,500 families. They have been welcomed as wholeheartedly as this newborn into the community. for those working with the quintuplets to sign up in the back and make sure you check your schedule so those times are covered. The Lord be with you. May God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The babies usually are changed and then fed right away. Here at the church, hundreds of volunteers attend this orientation session before visiting the Dirks home. It is the beginning of RSV season, and Nurse Dorothy Mall cannot overstate the dangers this highly contagious respiratory virus or any illness poses to the quintuplets. Babies are very vulnerable right now, and any illness would probably mean hospitalization uh, or could even be fatal for them. To be safe, the quintuplets will avoid all public places until next May, when RSV season is over. It is crucial that the volunteers do not report for duty unless they are 100% healthy. There's a whiteboard in the kitchen that has information about the babies. We think we're giving them the gift of helping, and we're finding that the gift is ours. And we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers. You just got to hope that you're not going to be dealt anything that you can't handle. And then you, you look around you and, and you find people that, that don't even know you who are praying day in and day out for you. And it's just so amazing to see everybody come together in this, this spiritual sense. Hello. Hello. How are you? Thank you for volunteers. I'm already signed up for oh, one in the morning. Great. Listen, I did it last week. Listen, I did it last week. 
that begins here. Uh, every time they come to church, every time they come to a meeting, we are in hopes that they'll have checked their personal calendars and come with their avail availability. She's just asking, she should go to orientation first, right, before she signs up? Yeah. Yeah. I personally feel like it's just amazing, you know, um, for all these people to be volunteering and helping when, you know, they don't know me, they don't know us, you know, at all. This is above and beyond, I think, anything that the two of us can handle, by far. It's being able to get to everybody when, you know, just like now, you know, I mean, you've got, you know, three out of, you know, five awake, you know, so, I mean, someone's got to hold each one of those that are not feeling up to sitting alone, you know. Between the two of us, I mean, there's just not enough arms. An army of 70 volunteers a week shows up to help the Dirks meet the challenges of raising five infants at once. <laughs> Adhering to a strict feeding schedule is a top priority. Brenda's daily ritual includes preparing 35 bottles of formula for seven different feedings. Each baby is color-coded to avoid confusion, and their habits and needs are recorded for all to see. In the middle of the night, a remote camera catches one of the volunteers caring for a baby. After one of the feedings, the volunteers put the babies back to sleep and try to grab some, too. The quintuplets go through about 35 diapers a day. In just one year alone, that means a staggering 13,000 diapers. The arithmetic is daunting, and so is the never-ending laundry. How are the troops today? Good. Just hanging out. Are they watching the game yet? <laughs> Occasionally, there is a moment to relax, enjoy a football game, That's a good question. The biggest one, huh? And a visit from Father Harris. Look at this. Sleep, sleep, cray, cray, sleep. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Apart from the volunteers, help has also come in the form of donations, large and small. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Grocer Dick Reinhardt, who has yet to meet the Dirks, has already pledged over 1,500 diapers to their cause. I don't know anybody that can't have their hearts go out to them, and whether they help them with prayers, or they help them with uh, taking care of the babies, it's just something that uh, touches, I think, everyone's heart. And we are very fortunate to be able to participate uh, with something that they are in dire need of right now. Formula, diapers, and clothes have been donated to cover most of the quintuplets' needs for at least the first year. But Jim, a systems engineer at Lockheed Martin, and Brenda are acutely aware of the financial burden five additional children bring to the home. <coughs> to advance his career, Jim is seeking an MBA through night school online. Just tomorrow, I'm sure it's going to be a little yeah. Yeah. Ice force. Sleep has become a precious commodity for both of them. Can't sleep here. At 11.30 p.m., Jim puts Brenda to sleep. Thank you, and you just go have a nice snooze. Okay. He returns to his studying until 2.30 a.m. Less than four hours later, a new day dawns. Jim is off to a full day of work then we'll return to family time in the evening and more studying into the wee hours of the night. Say bye to Daddy. We'll see you. Today is November 7th. It is a chilly 14 degrees outside and time for one of the quintuplets' regular checkups with their doctor. With five premature infants, Brenda and Jim have many concerns. The babies are making slow progress gaining weight, and Katina is still on oxygen. 
But most worrisome is Darren, who has developed a new problem with his eyes, unrelated to his previous eye surgery. Now that winter is approaching, the quintuplets are receiving flu shots. Born prematurely six months ago, from a medical perspective, they are considered to be just two and a half months old. Hi. Oh, how are you? Hi. And she says hi, too. <laughs> it's wonderful to see five kids there. It's just it's a miracle, and you can't help but be a little overwhelmed that it, that it happened, and it seems to be going so well. This is our, you know, from the past few weeks, this is when we started doing the letting them sleep at night. Yeah, these are the numbers we used right. last time. Brenda has a degree in early childhood development, which makes visits to the doctor's office all the more thorough and comprehensive. To help the quintuplets gain weight, they have been put on an enriched, highly caloric formula. Do you have a report from Katina from the pulmonologist that just came up? Katina does not appear to be having any troubles breathing, and after two months at home, she should be going off her oxygen soon. He's calling your apnea study normal. Okay. Good. Um, I would think he'll be calling you today or tomorrow and telling you to, that you can go off. We'll, we'll be, be free and clear of wires, hopefully, by, by December. Yeah, by Christmas. Who weren't you sure it was tracking? Darren, now you're going to prove me wrong, aren't you? No, he hasn't tricked on me. Hi. He scans a lot. He's, just, he's yeah. constantly just... He'll focus every now and then on, you know, he'll focus on something. Uh -huh. But he won't track. You know. I don't see it either. If there's something you don't do well, there may be something else. And so with, when you look at kids, if there's one problem, it raises the chance that there are other problems. So we like for there to be none. So Darren's not tracking may be a sign that other things in his brain won't work as well. I think I'm gonna have to leave you down. Yeah, I think you track, you certainly look at me. You have even cried. Generally, they're doing all what they should. And to be doing that now is a great sign. I wish it meant that they will have no problems in life. It doesn't, but it's certainly a good sign. The Dirks quintuplets have been slowly growing and gaining weight since their birth six months ago. So this is the first cold day you've had them out? Yeah. yeah. Dr. Zimmerman, their family doctor, examines them every few weeks, checking up on the baby's general health, weight, and social interaction. He is concerned about Darren's eyes. It bothered me that Darren didn't track. He didn't seem to focus on me. He was scanning. He didn't seem to look and see where I am. Why there's not anything we can say, oh, we need to do this to fix that. It worries you that maybe there's other issues that's gonna keep him from developing as quickly. It's a clue, it's a hint. It certainly doesn't mean anything for sure. Every parent can worry themselves sick over that. Every doctor I know can get too worried over every little thing. Uh, when you have five, it's, it's gonna be hard because they're at high risk because of their prematurity uh, to have learning disabilities or other issues later in life. When you compare a vision, a possible vision problem to possibly losing your child, you know, there's no comparison. You know, after all that we've been through, you know, it's, it's a real easy thing to just say, okay, let's just keep an eye on it and we'll go with what happens. And I think we learned a lot about, you know, from from everything we've been through about, you know, overreacting to things and how dangerous that can be just to the child itself because you're putting that much more emotional stress on them, worrying about, you know, is it is it something to really worry about or not? So it's it's one of those things you you do what you can, you take it as you can, and you go from there. For now, Brenda and Jim will keep a close watch on Darren's eyes and have him followed by a specialist. In the meantime, they savor every opportunity to spend one-on-one -on -one time with their babies. Kids respond well to nurturing. You know, a kid does need nurturing to develop 
They need to be touched and loved. They need to hear voices. You know, they need to be warm and comfortable. I believe that accomplishes as much as any sort of analytical approach. And for kids who are at risk for developmental problems, you want to do everything possible. And I think the nurturing and the love and the interaction that Brenda and Jim do give is what they need to do. And uh, that's what they should spend their time doing. That's nice to have a bath when our tummy isn't so hungry, isn't it? And with the love and support offered by volunteers, that care and attention can be given more often. Guess what? I got seven books at the library and two movies at the library. They especially enjoy their big sister, Samantha. As a family physician, Dr. Zimmerman also looks after Jim, Brenda, and Samantha to ensure they are faring well under the new demands of family life with quintuplets. You can't have healthy kids if you don't have healthy parents and healthy siblings. So I try to look out for how they're doing. Um, right now they have strangers in their house. You know, some of them they've gotten to know and they probably have become friends. Others really are strangers and here they're letting someone take care of their kid, and that's another stress. Okay, when are you coming tomorrow? One to five. Okay. When you're a parent, you want to do everything for your kids, but we all have our limits, and sometimes you need to get away. You need time without worrying about a kid, and with five, that's very hard to come by. Your turtles do that. But with help from Brenda's mother, Jean, and the volunteers, Brenda and Jim have planned a getaway. <laughs> Here at legendary Lambeau Field in Wisconsin, they are given the opportunity to attend a game with their beloved football team, the Green Bay Packers. We have two tickets. Yeah. Six. No way. We don't need to zoom on the camera anymore. With help from friends, Jim and Brenda are given the chance to see their heroes up close. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lambeau Field. I just called, I told Thank mom, you. and you know, she told everybody there that you know we're right in the end zone, so it's pretty cool. Kids are doing well, talked to Sam for a little bit, and she's doing great, she's having a good time, so. Spoiled by grandma, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Packers deliver a win and a rousingly good time. Brenda's parents have long been a source of support for Brenda and Jim, particularly when they gave birth to their daughter, Samantha, while still in high school. I don't know if I can even begin to say how much my mom has helped my dad, too. I mean, he, you know, he's on the road, but, you know, the, the support that they have given us, um, we wouldn't be anywhere without, without them. Jean and her husband also provided some financial support to help Jim and Brenda through those fragile years. Remarkably focused, they both went on to earn their college degrees. I remember, you know, days where you'd go to school in the morning, you'd work in the afternoon, you'd come home, and from midnight to 2 a.m., you'd do homework. You know, and it's, it's, it's a lot of work. But at the same time, you know, looking back at it now that we are where we are, it's incredibly rewarding to know that, you know, you're able to, to do this. You know, you're able to juggle everything and still be able to, you know, somehow master it to a certain degree. And, um, you know, it, it gives a lot more um, self-confidence, I think, in knowing that, okay, I, you know, I can do this, I can do other things. Ready? Fly? Now, with an additional five children to raise, Jim and Brenda are meeting this awesome challenge. I don't even think I could stand on that thing. <laughs> we are handling it, and it's going well, considering everything. We can't ask for anything more, you know. We've but it's, got... it's handling it with help. You know, it's, it's people coming together, and I think that's the big thing. You know, just the two of us, I think it, it would be an overwhelming, yeah. you know, ordeal. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's volunteers, it's, it's family, it's, you know, getting time away every once in a while to regain sanity a little bit and, you know, start talking in adult language every once in a while, too, <laughs> always helps. Nestled in the warmth of their home, the Dirks settle in for the Wisconsin winter with the hope that no one will become seriously ill.
It's springtime in Wisconsin. And the Dirks quintuplets are back for a checkup at the River Falls Clinic. Hey, happy Easter! The quintuplets are nearly 11 months old, and their mother, Brenda, and a friend visit the doctor in two shifts. They're starting to look like little boys instead of uh, little babies. Huh? Darren, who has had a problem tracking with his eyes, is beginning to focus more clearly on people and objects. Now Darren's eyes is starting to track better. Oh, he tracks and really well. You're still seeing nystagmus constantly? Very, very little. I mean, it's a lot better than what it was. Um, it's, it's there, but it's not, not as bad. That's but he's good. tracking really well. Up we go. Since the quintuplets were born nearly four months early, they are experiencing normal developmental delays. There's below the fifth percentile, mm -hmm. but again, they're following the curve, right. growing at the right rate now. You know, Brooklyn's up almost 50th percentile. So just to keep it in perspective, Brooklyn is still smaller than average. <laughs> Hi. Huh? Did I surprise you, or are you happy? To account for their prematurity, Dr. Zimmerman looks for developmental milestones more appropriate to seven and a half month old babies as opposed to their real age of 11 months. The girls are sitting with help and lifting their heads well. But Darren, when compared to his brother Sean, is lagging behind. If you pick up Sean, if you watch, as I pull him up, his shoulders and head come right with me. He, he wants to help me. And as I hold him up this way, He's positioning himself and turning, wiggling. I'm not having to sort of balance with him. He just does it himself. Well, with Darren, who gave me a nice big smile, but as you can see, as I pull, his head slags, and then he realizes it comes around. He's harder to hold, he feels heavier, even though I know he isn't, because he's just more floppy in my hands. He doesn't have as much trunk strength. So. Darren, showing signs of developmental delays, may need to be examined by a specialist. But for now, Brenda relies on Dr. Zimmerman to monitor all the quintuplets' overall progress every two months. It's May 5th, one year exactly since the Dirks quintuplets entered the world. Personalities are shining through. We've got the gamut of personalities. We've got, you know, Sean, who's Mr. Mellow and laid back and takes it all in, and Stephanie, who's, she's, she's a little leader. She's, she's gonna be out front doing everything first. And Brooklyn, the pistol, that just sums her up. She's <laughs> Darren, He's Mr. Personality. He's got, you know, the smiles, the killer smiles, and Katina. A little bit more serious, I think, than the other ones. Yeah, yeah, she is more serious. She's a thinker, mm -hmm. you know. In the space of just 12 months, the Dirks have gathered a lifetime of memories. From the fragile beginnings of life to the awesome responsibility of parenting to the abundant love and sheer joy that five additional children bring to the home. It is hard to imagine life without them. As far as the distant future, you know, you, we're going to have five, you know, leaving the house. So we're, our, our house is going to go from, you know, seven to two. And it, it, it's going to make a big difference if that, you know, assuming again, because I mean, you're, all you're doing is you're making assumptions on, you know, this or that, you know. And, and every time I seem to make assumptions, you know, some <laughs> power greater than me manages to uh, <laughs> tell me what it's really going to be like. So, so um, if that's the case, I'm just going to plan it. Everybody's going to just live at home for the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs>